Hello, hello. Good afternoon. How are you out there? Hope you're doing well. Praise the Lord. This is another time in the presence of the Lord to eat at his table, to eat good food, good spiritual food, milk for those who need milk and bread for those who need bread and meat for those who need meat for us to be strong in the Lord and grow in a healthy, spiritual and vibrant life. Thank you for coming again. My name is Joy, and before we proceed, I'd like us to go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again for your love and for your faithfulness. Thank you because you are so good, you are so kind. You're holy, you're righteous. Heavenly Father, I bless your holy name. I come today before your holy presence. I pray you forgive me of any sins in my heart or in my actions. I ask for your forgiveness and I pray for cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I humble myself. I pray, Lord, you speak through me, grant me utterance. I ask for my brothers and sisters out there, for all the viewers that you speak to them. Lord, you will teach us your word. Help us, Lord, to be grounded and established in your word. Make us disciples that we also make disciples for you. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. For this is the confidence that we have, that whenever we ask according to your will, you hear us. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Today, we are going to look at some foundational teachings of faith. We are going to look at the first principle, things that we need to know as we are growing in our faith. So I'm going to read from, first of all, I'm going to read from Hebrew chapter 5, 12. Then I'm going to read from Hebrew 6, 1 to 3. That will be our course scripture for today. Praise the Lord. Hebrew chapter 5 verse 12 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. In this uh, scripture, Paul was talking to some believers whom they are not really babies in the Lord. They have been believers for some time, but they refuse to grow in their spiritual life. They are still behaving like babies, like carnal Christian. And so Paul is rebuking them in this um, in this chapter that you have to be teachers. You should be teaching. You should be uh, raising disciples for the Lord, but you still need milk. You still need to be taught the basic principle of faith. So if you're out there, there are some things too you have to know about the basic principle of faith. Today we'll go through them. We don't want to assume that, oh, I've been in the Lord. I've been in church for 20 years. I've been in faith for 30 years. So I, I know it. No, we still need to know some of these principles. Praise the Lord. Uh, April 6, verse 1 to 3. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principle of Christ, let us go on to perfection. This is for the matured Christians. That, okay, let's leave that the elementary principle. Let's go to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying of ends, of resurrection of the dead, 
and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Praise the Lord. So here Paul is telling some mature Christian in the church. Let's go to perfection. Let's leave all those basic principle, elementary principle of faith. But if God permits us, we will still go. We will still do it. Even as mature Christians, we still need to go through some foundational teachings once a while or when we need to teach some young believers in the Lord, it is very important to help them to know. So this is what we're going to do today as God permits us by the grace of God to learn some of these foundational principles of God. The first one I want us to look at is our faith, faith and repentance, faith and repentance. This is the core factor, the, the basic principle of coming to the Lord to be a believer without faith you can't please God the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God we are saved by grace through faith is not of works let any man should boast so we need to know it's through faith that we come to believe in Jesus Christ when we heard the Word of God so faith is important and repentance is also important when we receive the word of God, we believe that Jesus died for our sins. We repented of our sins. It is important for a sinner to know that it needs to turn. Repentance means you turn from your sins. You ask God for forgiveness and you don't go there anymore. You're turning from your sins. Repentance is the godly sorrow that we, we have in our hearts when we realize that we have done something, you know, bad even as christian we still make mistakes we fall into sins maybe by omission by commission we need to repent repentance is very important and these basic you know principles in our christian life it's until christ comes because faith that's how we come to god in every every way without faith we cannot please god faith and obedience you know faith and obedience when the bible talks about faith it talks about obedient faith even when you come to the lord through faith it's an obedient faith we believe in our heart unto righteousness and confession confession is made made with our mouth you know unto salvation that is obedient faith and so obedient faith in god and uh, our repentance, they are vital, you know, they are vital teachings and f vital steps in our Christian faith every day of our lives. When we read the word of God, it activates, reactivates our faith. And we continue to live by faith. The Bible says the righteous shall live by faith. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. The second principle is baptism. Baptism is very, very important. Some people say, oh, I'm not saved by baptism. You are not saved by baptism, but it's part of the steps to our faith and um, identifying with the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even Jesus showed us by example. He was baptized by water. So we need to be baptized. Jesus said, go and preach the gospel baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we need to be obedient to that. If you have not been baptized through immersion in water after you believe in Jesus Christ, you need to take that step. Praise the Lord. It is very important. And we have three kinds of baptism in, um, in, this, uh, in our faith. We have water baptism, the first one, and we have Holy Spirit baptism. That's baptism of fire. The Bible says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses. We need the baptism of fire too. And then the baptism of suffering and death. Yes, we need it as Christians. We have to suffer. If you really want to live a godly life, you will suffer. You must suffer. And that's what many of our preachers don't want to you know, tell us the truth. You want to follow Jesus? You have to suffer and even at times, you have to die. You lose your 
life for Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The third one principle is consecration. You need to set yourself apart. You set yourself apart for the Lord. Now that you have become a new creation in Christ, you need to begin to walk in all that you do. You set yourself apart for the Lord. Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. I will never look at a woman lustfully. So we too, we need to concentrate our spirit, soul, and body to the Lord to set it apart. Okay, others may be doing this. No, I'm not doing this because the Bible says I'm holy. I'm a chosen generation, a holy nation, a holy people, you know, called to show forth his praises. And how do we show forth those praises? Is living a holy life, spirit, soul, and body. God wants us to live a holy life and set apart our lives unto him. And another principle is fellowshipping with other believers. It is very important that we fellowship together. Hion sharpens iron. So please, my brothers and sisters, find, even if it's just one person or two, fellowship together, pray together. If you have a church or congregation where they are preaching the truth, go there and fellowship together. It is very important for our spiritual growth. Another one is washing of feet. In John 13, 3 to 10, Jesus showed the example of washing the feet of his disciples. Even he washed the feet of Judas. Judas who was going to betray him. Jesus washed uh, his feet. So this is showing to us that we need to be humble and have a servant heart to serve others, to love others and serve them in faith and in love of God. Even our enemies, God said we should love our enemies and do good to them. So we should be humble to serve others. Praise the Lord. The next one will be laying of hands. Laying of hands. You see that laying of hands in um, Acts, Acts 19, 6, Paul laid hands upon some uh, disciples in the church to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we could also see in the church, there's laying of hands, you know, to transfer leadership, like Moses had to transfer his leadership to Joshua. The God commanded him to lay his hand upon Joshua. So laying of hands, you know, is part of this. Sometimes, you know, God um, give commandment to the leaders to raise other leaders through laying of hands, you know, and they impart spiritual gifts also through laying of hands. And you can find that in uh, 1 Timothy 4, 14, 14, and then Numbers 27, 18, talks about, you know, laying of hands too. And another foundational teaching that I wanted to know is about resurrection of the dead. First, Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 18. The Bible talks about resurrection of the dead. Christians should not mourn or grieve like the unbelievers because Christian, you don't you 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 die, but you are alive in Christ. So sometimes the Bible says we sleep in the Lord. They don't actually say dead. Like Jesus was telling his disciples, Lazarus is sleeping. Let us go and wake him up. You see, a, a, a child of God, death is just a transitional stage into life, eternal life, you know, in heaven. So we sleep. And so we shouldn't mourn our dead ones like, oh, we are going to meet again in heaven by his grace. Amen. Another one is eternal judgment. There is eternal judgment. God is holy and just, and God has set a time for judgment. Everybody is going to stand before God on the judgment day, and we are going to be judged according to our works. So God is calling us unto righteousness, holy life, and God is going to judge everybody according to his word, his holy word. So we must be ready and we must be careful of what kind of work are we doing? Are, you, are we doing the work of God, the righteous work of God or our own work? So we must understand. Even God says in 1 
Peter 4, 17, that judgment is going to start from his own house. So God is going to judge his own people first before he goes to the unbelievers. So we must know that God has a standard and his standard is holiness and he's not going to, you know, uh, lower that standard because of his own children. So we have to meet the standard of God, holiness, and then God is going to judge us and then he will go to the unbelievers. Praise the Lord. Judgment. We should fear God and obey him. The final one is assurance of eternal salvation. God has assured us as we continue to work out our salvation, continuing in faith, enduring all trials, temptation, persecution, when we endure to the end, it's going to give us a crown of life. So I want to encourage you, be strong in the Lord. Continue to strive, you know, continue to, 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 to enter through the narrow gate. Grace of Jesus Christ is sufficient for us. True faith, we will make it to the end. Praise the Lord. And that's um, going to be for uh, what we have today. Um, next time, by God's grace, we'll be looking at something else about becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless you. I love you. God love you. loves you most. Amen.